built the cabin of the plane on a soundstage. And then we basically just shot it in order, like once they boarded the plane to him wrapping up our hand, getting his epiphany, to making the phone call, dealing with the pilots, to ultimately the zombie attack. And you know, the audience knows, once the talk starts barking, you know <laughs> at this point of the movie what's gonna happen. But the suspense is still there, how it's gonna happen. It's all about the journey in that moment, the journey of suspense. Mark was very concerned, and the, is the audience gonna understand that there's nothing else that these people could do other than throw a grenade to try and save themselves. And ultimately the side of the cabin was just rigged for an explosion for the grenade that, that can be exploding. That was all shot in camera. You have so much spectacle and so much scope in the first two acts of the movie that we thought it would be really interesting to make it much more intimate and suspenseful. You now know what the zombies are capable of, and now you can't get any bigger and make it even a bigger spectacle, so now you bring it all back to the suspenseful moment between the Z and your hero. I think these things have a weakness and him trying to prove a theory. I think they're spreading a pathogen, and that pathogen needs a healthy host. But even if you're right, I mean, infecting the populace with a lethal illness is not exactly a cure. It's not a cure. It's camouflage. Jerry pitches us this idea based on what he's witnessed around the world, and the idea that these zombies, like all predatory animals, will avoid people who are diseased. Deadly pathogen with a high mortality rate, but curable. In nature, these parasites will actually control their hosts to go in certain directions so that they can infect a new host. And there really isn't often a point in trying to infect a host that is already sick. Do we have what we need to try it? We have all we could want. Problem is, they're all stored in B-Wing. What's the matter with B-Wing? B-Wing is out of bounds. I mean, it's completely taken over by zombies. But in order to engage in this experiment, we have to get him in there and get him out. Again, you're playing that, that building very much on suspense. <laughs> you constantly want to create suspense around every corner. Action! The scene when we're shooting today really comes to the climax of the film, and it is uh, the moment when Jerry's theory about how to defeat uh, the zombies is put into practice. And the guinea pig that he uses to try this out on is himself. He's going to inject himself. And he is confronted by a killer zombie. It's just the two of them, and there's no way out. I casted him spe specifically, and his name is Michael. He's a theater actor, but he did a lot of pantomime, a lot of movement, and he just has incredible expression with his face, and I thought that you felt there was a human being once in there, and now it's all gone. 
he was alive too. He had a life, and that's why I put a wedding ring on him. And it's very subtle, but he bangs sometimes the red ring against the window. That you feel like there's a whole history to this man. There was a family, there may have been kids, and now he's just this zombie, and that you feel like the loss of humanity in that moment between them. What I think this movie does really well is it draws from biological inspiration. Do we imagine, because we see this movie, that there are threats from emerging infectious diseases? Well, that's already a given. 60% of our diseases are from things which have jumped from animals into humans. Of course, we have to go on and ask whether those parasites would be controlling our behavior. But if it's going to kill half of all our society, that itself will control our behavior. <laughs> Zombies are often associated with dystopia and, you know, a dark vision of the future. And this film is scary, it's thrilling, it's realistic, but at the end of the day, there's something very optimistic about the ingenuity of human beings. I'm an optimist and I always believe there's hope. And that's what I feel Jerry Lane's character is. He's someone who has seen so many places that have been in crises, but ultimately came out of it and, and he's still hopeful and positive. How can I solve this? How can I change it? How can we, as human beings, come together and survive? The war isn't over. The plague isn't done yet. We're still battling disease. But now we have found a camouflage. Now there's a way to beat them. Now we can all work together and end this war. Approaching target, mission to engage, all clear. Light them up, light them up. It's not just a horror movie. It touches on many layers of thematic stories. I think you know, it, it deals with the human story. It deals with political issues. So, you know, you will have that, that cross factor in terms of your audiences who will want to come and watch it because they see it from very different perspectives. Actions. I think the most enjoyable part of, about filming this movie has been that it, it's such an environment of collaboration. We show up and if we have a scene to do and we all pitch in to figure out the best way of telling that story. And that's an actor's dream, is, is to feel like we're all making something together. I think the biggest challenge of this movie was to stay true to the original ambition of making a great, entertaining, enormous, satisfying, original film. And it's meant to show how the entire world is affected, so by definition, you have to go to a lot of places and show a lot of people. World War Z is definitely the biggest movie I've ever done. The scale is enormous. It's a worldwide, global journey we're on. And if you make a movie on that scale, you just need to be surrounded with the best people you can who understand the vision you have for the movie and also be able to support that because ultimately you can't do it alone. And most of them have done big movies, so they were all really incredible support and I'm, I'm really thankful to all of them.